So we're talking about this parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system, right? You know, the sympathetic is all about fight or flight, shuts down digestion, gets the body ready for exercise, whereas the parasympathetic is the exact opposite, right? It's everybody relaxed, ready for digestion. What's nice, uh, what we need to talk about now is a, we need to compare the different kind of uh, arrangements of neurons that are associated with each one of these systems. Okay, so there's some pretty major differences between the neural connections of the autonomic or the parasympathetic versus the sympathetic nervous system. But for comparison, as a review, let's talk about where neurons are in the somatic nervous system. Okay, so this is not the autonomic somatic nervous system consists of motor neurons that connect to what type of organ? Muscles, but specifically what type of muscles? Skeletal, skeletal muscles, muscles, right? So these are um, the, the motor signal that we can control, right, if we want to contract muscles. So we're going to talk about how those guys are set up as a comparison, okay? So um, somatic motor neuron. We're going to start with this guy as a, as a comparison, okay? <coughs> The neuron, and we'll say that this as an example, this is a neuron that tells some muscle fibers in like our lower leg to contract. Like some muscle fibers in our calf, your knee muscle, like your calf muscle to contract. Okay, so this is a neuron that's going to simulate those, those fibers to contract. That neuron's going to help us have a cell body. Okay, so that's, that um, represents the cell body. And then it's going to be attached to an axon that travels away from that cell body. All right. Kind of like that. And then that axon is going to connect to part of that muscle, like right? a little bit of the muscle fiber. And so that's going to represent part of that muscle. Okay? Everybody with me? You just got neuron connects to the muscle fiber and the somatic motor, uh, uh, somatic nervous system. So, do you guys remember where that cell body is in the body? It's in the, the brain. The, well, it's not the brain. It's in the spinal cord. Okay, good, right? It's in the spinal cord. What part of the spinal cord? First off, is it gray matter or white matter? Gray, gray. matter. Okay, because gray matter contains cell bodies and dendrites, and that's cell body. Okay, so it's in gray matter. What part of the gray matter, or which area of the gray matter is in that spinal cord? It's in a horn. We got three horns, right? You got. Dorsal, lateral, ventral, ventral horn. All right. Okay. So it's kind of like puts it all together. Okay. So this guy is in the ventral horn <clears throat> of the spinal cord. Okay. Right. Now that neuron leaves the spinal cord, goes out the, the ventral root, and then he goes to the lower leg. This axon. Um, associated with this neuron, is it heavily myelinated, lightly myelinated, or not myelinated at all? Heavily, okay? That's because this needs to be like the fastest neuron that we have, okay? Like when we, when we tell our muscles to contract, we want them to contract right away. Make sense? So we want this signal to be very fast. Myelin, the more myelin you have, the faster it goes. So what I'll draw is, these light blue filled in circles, they represent very heavily myelin nation. <laughs> it represents that there's a bunch of swan cells all around this um, neuron and it's heavily myelinated, very thick swan cells. Okay. Now, all right, that's cool. <clears throat> when, um, this neuron fires, that action potential reaches the end of the axon, in the axon terminal. Big neurotransmitters are released right here in the synapse. What neurotransmitter is released here? Acetylcholine. Remember that? that? That's always what gets released onto skeletal muscle. So, <clears throat> I'm going to draw a bunch of little pink dots. 
that represents acetylcholine. The abbreviation for acetylcholine is capital A-C-H. Okay. Now, when acetylcholine gets released, does that stimulate that muscle or inhibit that muscle? Stimulate, stimulate the muscle. I mean, it tells it to contract. That's a stimulatory effect. And that's always the case with the somatic, motor, somatic nervous system. Acetylcholine, when it gets released on the muscles, is always going to stimulate that muscle to help it contract. So I'm going to do a little plus sign right here. And that means that it stimulates that muscle. Okay? So that's the situation with the somatic motor nervous system, okay, with a somatic motor neuron. Now let's compare that to the parasympathetic nervous system. Things are a little bit different, okay? What you'll have is you'll have a neuron for the cell body, and this neuron is gonna have a pretty long axon. Then that neuron is gonna connect to a second neuron. So you'll have this pair of neurons that connect together on their way to the organ. This second neuron is going to be much shorter. So you'll have a, the first neuron is pretty long, the second neuron is pretty short, and then this guy, the second neuron, is going to innervate some target organ, like the heart. Okay? Could be the heart, could be the stomach, could be the small intestine, could be the eyes, you know, but it's going to innervate a target organ. Now, a little bit of terminology here. This first neuron is called a preganglionic neuron. Pre and then ganglionic neuron. What do you think these called? Postganglionic neuron. What's the definition of a ganglion? Let me get this in this real quick. It's a collection of neurons, neurons. cell bodies. So it's just like a collection of cell bodies. There's not just going to be one pair of neurons. There's probably going to be like thousands that run in parallel. Okay, so when you have this guy is going to be hanging out with a bunch of thousands of his buddies, thousands of other cell bodies. So this is the ganglion where this second neuron cell body is. That makes sense. There's going to be a lot, you know, together, and so. This is called the autonomic ganglion, where those two guys connect. This is the neuron before the ganglion. This is the neuron after it. You know, well, the axon after it. You guys get the point. Okay. Now, where do you think the cell body of the preganglionic neuron is? You don't know this, but like just guess. Think about all right. This is this is how we figure it out. Parasympathetic nervous system, right? We talked about a cranial nerve that had a pretty large role in the parasympathetic nervous system. Which one was that? In fact, his his main motor job was parasympathetic control. Vagus. Vagus, right? So the vagus nerve has a huge role in the parasympathetic nervous system. Where does that vagus nerve start? Where does he emerge from? The medulla, okay, or the brain. Okay, so the cell bodies, preganglionic neuron, and these neurons, like they make up the vagus nerve, for example. Okay, so that first cell body is going to be located in the medulla. We're going to even go more general, and we're going to say that the preganglionic neuron cell body is going to be located in the central nervous system. In the case of the vagus nerve, this guy is going to be located in the medulla. We also have some other pathways where they're also located in the brain stem, like the division between the midbrain and the pons. And then we have some um, a few different neural circuits where it starts at the base of the spinal cord. So we'll talk about this later, but just remember that this guy hangs out in the central nervous system. Okay. 
Okay. See how this guy is like super short, right? In fact, sometimes he's so short that this cell body hangs out in the wall of the target organ. Like this neuron is super long and it gets him all the way to the heart. And then this neuron is so short, his cell body is probably like right next to the heart. Okay, so this cell body is most likely very close to the target organ. Okay, and so we'll just say like close to the organ because he's so short. All right. Does this pathway need to be as fast as that pathway? No, I didn't need to be as fast. Okay, and that means that this neuron isn't going to be heavily myelinated, he's just going to be lightly myelinated, which is represented by these open blue circles. So these get, it's like lightly myelinated. The postganglionic neuron has no myelin, no Schwann cells whatsoever. All right, when this guy fires, he sends an action potential all the way to that postganglionic neuron. When the action potential reaches the axon terminal, he's gonna release acetylcholine onto the postganglionic neuron. So, A, C, H. Do you think that acetylcholine stimulates or inhibits that postganglionic neuron. Stimulates. Right, and that kind of makes sense. Like when the action potential reaches the end, you want this next one to fire. So the acetylcholine is going to stimulate. And so I'm going to do a positive sign right here, which means it stimulates. Okay. Then the postganglionic neuron fires. Action potential travels the short distance down that short axon reaches the axon terminal, and then more acetylcholine is released onto the target organ. So this is more acetylcholine. <clears throat> In the case of the heart, what does it do? Stimulate or inhibit? Inhibit? It's, 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 this is where it's tricky. This is the parasympathetic nervous system. What, what do we know about, what does the parasympathetic nervous system do to the heart? It slows it down, down, right? So in this case, it's going to inhibit, right? It tells it to slow down, not beat as hard, okay? So in this case, it's going to inhibit the heart. What about if it was going to the stomach? What would it do to the stomach? What does the parasympathetic nervous system do? It, it, it increases. It increases. In secretion of hydrochloric acid, it increases the contractions of, of the stomach to mix things up. So it's going to stimulate the stomach. What would it do to the small intestine? Uh, stimulate. stimulate, right? That's cool. What would it do to the salivary glands? It's stimulated, stimulated. right? What would it do? This is a tricky one. What would it do? to the smooth muscle in the walls of the bronchi. Bronchi are the tubes that connect the lungs to our trachea. Inhibit it? Yeah. What do you Stimulate. <laughs> I was wrong, sorry. It would stimulate. So this, is, this is why. You got smooth muscle in the walls of the bronchi, right? And they wrap around the bronchi. When that smooth muscle contracts, it's going to squeeze. And what's that going to do to the diameter of the bronchi? It's going to make it smaller. Okay. When the parasympathetic system is active, we don't need as much air. So we want the tubes to be smaller. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it actually is going to stimulate those muscles in the walls of the bronchi. Makes those tubes smaller. We don't need to breathe in and out as much. Okay. So the take home is these target organs, it's going to the acetylcholine or the parasympathetic nervous system is going to stimulate most, but it's going to inhibit the heart. Make sense? All 
All right, that's different from the sympathetic nervous system. We're gonna have the same double arrangement of neurons. We're gonna have a preganglionic neuron and a postganglionic neuron. But this time, the uh, preganglionic neuron is gonna be shorter. And the postganglionic neuron is gonna be longer. <clears throat> Where do you think the cell body of the preganglionic neuron of the sympathetic nervous system is located? I'll give you a hint. It's in the spinal cord. Is it going to be located in gray matter or white matter? Gray matter. Correct. Right. Gray matter. We got three horns. Close. Thumb ventral. Lateral, right? So if we remember the spinal cord, dorsal horn, that's where we have connections between afferent neurons that are coming in, like sensory afferents, you know, pain, temperature, pressure, all that stuff. The ventral horn, that's where the somatic motor neurons are. But remember the lateral horn? That's where the autonomic motor neurons are. Well, specifically, those are the guys hanging out in the lateral horn. It's these preganglionic neuron cell bodies of the sympathetic nervous system. So these guys are going to be located in the lateral horn. <clears throat> these guys, I'm going to explain this later. I'm just going to tell you where they're located. I'll explain it later. They're going to be located in the sympathetic trunk, like the trunk of an elephant. And I'll explain that later in a minute. They're often located in the sympathetic trunk. Okay, so that preganglionic neuron is just like all of the preganglionic neurons. What kind of myelin does it have? A lot, a little, or none? It's the same as all the others. So like, it's the same as the ones we just drew. Lightly myelinated, right? Open circle. So by definition, preganglionic neurons are lightly myelinated. Okay. Preganglionic neurons always release the same neurotransmitter. So what neurotransmitter is he gonna release? Acetylcholine. Same one, same pink ones. They're not really pink, but. Is that gonna stimulate or inhibit that postganglionic neuron? Stimulate. 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 It always does. Okay. This guy is just like all other postganglionic neurons. Is he heavily myelinated, lightly myelinated, or none? None. No. Okay. And he's going to connect to like a target organ, like the heart. Okay. I mean, we know this. Like most organs are innervated by both parasympathetic and sympathetic. Parasympathetic tells it to do one thing. Sympathetic tells it to do another. Okay. All right. So this, this is the heart. This guy does not release acetylcholine. He releases another neurotransmitter, and that neurotransmitter that he releases is called norepinephrine. I'll draw him in green. Okay. This is, abbreviation is NP, which stands for norepinephrine. Okay. And this norepinephrine can stimulate or, or inhibit. It depends on the receptor that receives it. So it can do both, either one. In the case of the heart, what do you think he does? Increase it. Stimulates it, okay. It tells them to contract faster and harder. In the case of the smooth muscle in the walls of the bronchi, what does it do? Inhibit. So this muscle is relaxed, the bronchi get larger, more air comes in and out, our respiratory rate can increase. What about our salivary glands? 
and mm-hmm. hit it. Right? What about the stomach? Mm-hmm. Inhibit, right? Shuts it down. What about the large arteries that are coming out of the heart? There's smooth muscle in them, okay? And those smooth muscle, smooth muscles, when they contract, it squeezes those arteries. What do you think it does there? It actually stimulates, it stimulates muscles, yeah. right? Because it, as it squeezes those arteries, mm-hmm. blood pressure goes up, and, and as blood pressure goes up, it allows the blood to move faster. And then we'll learn that and call it cardiovascular. So it's going to stimulate those arteries. What about um, the little arteries that are going to the skin? So you inhibit? Stimulate them. So it squeezes those little arteries so less blood goes to the skin. Now there's going to be other arteries that might go to tissues like our lung, or, you know, our, our, our skeletal muscles and our brain. It's going to relax those tissues or relax those muscles so more blood goes there. The, the take home is that it does either, it can do both, stimulate or inhibit based on what organ we're talking about. Um, and it's, we have different receptors that receive that norepinephrine and that really determines its effect. Okay. One more example, what would it do? Well, that's fine. We would have enough examples, I think. Oh, well, what would it do to the muscles that power breathing? Stimulate, Stimulate. so respiratory rate increases. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's one exception to this, though. The postganglionic neurons <clears throat> of the sympathetic nervous system that innervate sweat glands, okay, they actually release acetylcholine. So I'm going to say, unless sweat glands then acetylcholine. What do you think acetylcholine does to the sweat glands? Stimulate or inhibit? The sympathetic nervous system stimulates it makes you sweat. See how it gets tricky, right? Like last class, it probably seems so simple, right? You're like, oh, sympathetic, parasympathetic. Yeah, I just remember like who does what. But then when you get down to the, the, um, you know, the details of of the neurons, it gets a little trickier, right? So, um, so yeah, just as long as you get pretty familiar with this diagram that we're drawing right now, you'll you'll be fine, okay? But just, um, just I guess understand that it gets a little tricky. There's one, there's another exception, another unique pathway associated with the sympathetic nervous system. This um, looks like this. So you'll have a single preganglionic neuron that goes out to a gland that sits on top of the kidney. So here's the kidney. Right? And there's a little collection of tissue that sits on top of the kidney. It's called the adrenal gland, like adrenal, like add on top and then renal the kidney. All right, so the adrenal gland sits right here. All right, and this is, this is the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland has two parts. It has this, the tissue that's in the middle. It's called the medulla. Remember like bone tissue, you get the medullary cavity, right? Right, and then on the periphery, along the outside of the adrenal gland, you have the cortex, right? We're just worried about the medulla right now. So the middle of the adrenal gland. So adrenal medulla, M-E-D-U-L-L-A. This is a preganglionic neuron. It's just like all of the preganglionic neurons. What kind of myelin does he have? A lot, a little, or none? Mm. A lot. A little. He's just open circles, like just a little bit of myelin. Just like all preganglionic neurons, okay? What neurotransmitter does he release? Acetylcholine. Right, just like all everybody else. So he releases acetylcholine, which is going to stimulate. Well, I should I should ask that, but which is going to stimulate the adrenal medulla. Okay, so I'm going to do a little plus sign here. 
The adrenal medulla does something special. The adrenal medulla actually releases a bunch of adrenaline, which is a synonym for norepinephrine and epinephrine, into the bloodstream. Okay, so this guy is going to release a bunch of adrenaline, norepinephrine, and epinephrine into the blood. Epinephrine is just another version of norepinephrine. They have nearly identical functions. Okay, so NE and E, they're just neurotransmitters that don't get released at a synapse, they get released right into our bloodstream. What that does is that it just ramps up all the effects of the sympathetic nervous system. Mm -hmm. So like all these pathways, they go directly to a specific organ and they tell the heart rate to increase. Well, adrenaline, when it gets into our blood and that reaches the heart, it tells the heart to be even faster and even harder. It just magnifies the sympathetic nervous system. In fact, it's like a pretty substantial contribution. Like 60% of sympathetic activity at any given time you know, or when your sympathetic nervous system is active, is due to adrenaline. Like over half is due to the effects of adrenaline. So it's a very, you know, powerful uh, signal. So on our quiz, would we like have to be familiar with what stimulates and what inhibits? That's going to be more for the test. Okay. Like for the quiz, the types of questions you might get are: This nervous system has long preganglionic neurons. Okay. And that would be the parasympathetic system. This nervous system, the postganglionic neurons of this nervous system often release norepinephrine. Sympathetic. Okay. The neurons of this nervous system always release acetylcholine. Parasympathetic. So, so really, you, you want to try to pull out like the big differences between this okay. this diagram. Like, there's a lot of specifics in this diagram, mm -hmm. and you're gonna to want to try to pull out the specifics that make sense to you. This nervous system stimulates the heart. Sympathetic, I mean, that's easy, but you know, you know what I mean. D. Preganglionic neurons of this nervous system are located in the spinal cord. Sympathetic in the lateral horn of the spinal cord. Sympathetic. All right. So let's say you experience like a really stressful situation. You know, like a, like something to get you all, you know, adrenaline. You know, you're 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 upset or scared. Can you calm down like right away? Mm -hmm. It takes you like twenty or thirty minutes, right? This is why. Well. When these neurotransmitters get released right onto the target organ, they can be broken down or sucked back up, sequestered back up into that neuron very quickly because we have enzymes that as soon as these neurotransmitters get released, they break them down or suck them back up and then that signal is no longer there, right? But when adrenaline gets dumped into your bloodstream, we can't clean that up that quickly. What organ is responsible for removing the adrenaline out of the blood after the adrenal medulla releases it in there, you think? Like, what organ typically cleans a lot of stuff out of our blood? Liver. Not the kidneys. Liver. liver. Okay, so the liver has the job of filtering out all that adrenaline after it gets released into the blood. It can't do it immediately. It takes like 20 or 30 minutes to clean all that adrenaline out. So as soon as that, adre that adrenal gland releases adrenaline, the effects are going to stick around for a while. You know, because it takes, it's stuck in there. It's like just left in the blood. What this means is that you can go from, um, how, how do I say this? You can go from a very relaxed state to a very stressed state almost instantaneously, but you can't go the other way around that quickly, you know, because of the presence of, of uh, adrenaline. All right. Um, there are, so most organs, last thing I'll say is the most organs in the body are innervated by both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic, like the heart. You know, parasympathetic slows it down, sympathetic speeds it up. There's a couple of organs that are only innervated by the sympathetic system, so they have no parasympathetic innervation. Those examples are um, the blood vessels, the sweat glands, 
and the adrenal medulla, the adrenal gland. So like the parasympathetic system has no effect on those organs. It's only sympathetic. Like when we sweat, it's because the sympathetic nervous system told those sweat glands to do their thing. And then when we're not sweating, the sympathetic nervous system just stopped sending those signals. What was the last one you said? I'm sorry. And so it's uh, sweat glands, blood vessels, and the adrenal medulla. Okay. Which makes sense, right? I mean, the adrenal medulla is all about the sympathetic nervous system. All right. Everybody good on that? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk you guys through a couple pictures in the book that I feel like tie this all together. You know, now that we have, you know, we've talked about this, we've got a pretty good understanding of what's going on, and now I'm going to talk about a few pictures for the book. in my version, it's probably really close in your version too. Um, this is a nice little summary. So every, this is parasympathetic, we'll focus on this. Parasympathetic rest and digest, right? These purple, dark purple lines, they represent the axons and the cell bodies of preganglionic neurons. And these light purple lines are the postganglionic neurons. It looks like the dark purple lines are super long and the light purple lines are super short. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the long preganglionic neuron. Okay, that's good. Let's try to figure out. All right, so we said that the preganglionic neurons are located in the central nervous system, right? Mm -hmm. Well, these guys are located in the brain stem, so that makes sense. And then these guys are located at the base of the spinal cord, so that makes sense too. There's two different major pathways. You've got the sacral division and the cranial division. Okay, so some the a couple of these fibers originate in the base of the spinal cord or you know it's in the sacrum and some of these originate in the brain. Let's look at this guy. So this guy leaves the brain stem, goes out to the eye. What do you think he tells the eye to do? Good. Sympathetic nervous system. What's the a parasympathetic nervous system? What's he going to tell the eye to do? Close vision. So he's going to prepare the lens in our eye to look at things close up. And iris contract. Right. Right. When you're relaxed, your pupils are normal. It tells the eyes to contract. What cranial nerve are we talking about here? Close. Number three. Oculomotor. 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 Remember, the oculomotor had those autonomic fibers that control focusing and um, and uh, iris. So this is the oculomotor nerve. Like these fibers, where the oculomotor nerve starts out between the midbrain and the pons. That's where he is. Goes out to the eye, tells the eye to look at things close up, or prepares the eye for close up vision, and um, tells it to strip. So that kind of makes sense. What about this guy? He goes out to the salivary glands. What's he going to tell the salivary glands to do? Stimulate, Stimulate. tell them to produce their, their secretion. Okay, uh, what cranial nerve or nerves are we talking about? Facial for the submandibular, sublingual, and parotid is the glossopharyngeal. Remember that? There's the, the parotid. And so there's actually two cranial nerves that leave right here at, um, you know, basically uh, right at the division between the, the pons, medulla, and then the medulla. They come out here until the salivary glands do their thing. Whoa, look at this guy. He leaves the brainstem, goes to the heart, lung, stomach, pancreas, liver, gall. What nerve is that? Vagus. 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 Right? Vagus. He leaves the medulla. Goes out to all these torrid organs. You have these short postganglionic fibers. As a review, what does he tell the heart to do? 
Stem. Slow down. Lungs. Basically, decrease respiration rate, but constrict the smooth muscle and the bronchi. So there's, there's smaller tubes, less air. What's he tell the stomach to do? Contract is... and digest, right? Secrete more enzymes, hydrochloric acid. He stimulates, is all parasympathetic. Pancreas is associated with digestive enzymes. What's, what's it going to tell the pancreas to do? Stimulate. Stimulate, no right? Liver is going to be associated with the production of things like um, bile, which helps us uh, digest fats. So it's going to stimulate that. Mm -hmm. It's also going to tell the liver to convert excess blood sugar into glycogen to store, right? To store excess nutrients. Gallbladder holds bile, so it's going to stimulate that. The secretion of bile to digest. What's going to tell the bladder to do? Stimulate. Stimulate, contract, right? I mean, you're going to have this urge to urinate when you're relaxed. Um, the genitals, so the parasympathetic nervous system is required for sexual arousal. Okay. Now, if we go over to the sympathetic, all right, things look different, right? Like super different. Well, dark green are these preganglionic neurons, light green is the post. Where are these preganglionic neurons located? Spinal cord, lateral horn, specifically between like T1 and L2 or something, right? L2 or 3. Now, it looks like they kind of leave the spinal cord, make a connection with the postganglionic neurons. These postganglionic neurons are typically kind of long. Is that consistent with what we. So, if I go out to the eye, what's it going to tell the eye to do? Dilate. Dilate and prepare for distance vision. Skin, what's it going to tell the skin to do? It's going to constrict the little arteries going to the skin, okay, so blood is diverted elsewhere. What's it going to do to the, to the sweat glands in the skin? Stimulate them, right? Salivary glands. Inhibit. Lungs. It's going to do two different things. What's it going to do to, like, breathing rate? Increase, but it's also going to relax the smooth muscle on the walls of the bronchi. Which can make the tube bigger, more more hair. Heart. Stimulate, right? Stomach. Inhibit. Pancreas. Inhibit. Liver and gallbladder typically inhibit. Adrenal gland. Stimulate. Bladder. Inhibit. And for the genitals, the sympathetic nervous system is required for ejaculation and orgasm, but the parasympathetic is required for arousal, so that's really an example of how they both work together. And that's why a lot of antidepressant, anti-anxiety medications, right, one of their main modes of action is they work to just inhibit the entire sympathetic nervous system altogether through the secretion of, of neurotransmitters like serotonin and among other like you know biochemical pathways. And so a lot of times with uh, like SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, like Prozac and Lexapro and Paxil, right? One side effect will be sexual dysfunction. Well, that's why, right? Because the sympathetic nervous system is required for um, for sex to happen and uh, for required for ejaculation or orgasm, and, the and those drugs tone down the sympathetic nervous system. That's kind of the basis of that side of that. All right, I'm gonna show you guys one more thing. Remember how we said that the postganglionic neurons of the sympathetic nervous system are located in the sympathetic trunk? I was like, oh, I'm gonna explain that here in a little bit. This is what's going on here. Check out this picture. Here's this, the vertebrae, body of the vertebrae. This is the spinal cord that goes right down the, you know, the spine. You know, we got all our spinal nerves, ventral root, all that stuff. There's two columns of nerves that run parallel to the vertebrae on the outside of the spinal cord. These guys are called the sympathetic trunks, okay? And it's just a column of nerves that run on either side of the spine.
This is what happens with uh, these pre and post ganglionic neurons of the sympathetic nervous system. Cell body of the pre ganglionic neuron is right here in the lateral horn. Is that consistent with what we said? Well, that's where it should be. It goes out ventral. Does that make sense? Yup. Yeah. All efferent neurons go out ventral through the ventral root. Comes over here, this is just the, sp the spinal nerve. And then he leaves the, the whole vertebrae and spinal cord, comes out here, and then he jumps over to the sympathetic trunk, right? That's where he connects to the postganglionic neuron, which then leaves the sympathetic trunk and goes out to the target organ. A couple of different things can happen. I mean, I don't want you guys to get caught up in the specifics of these. Another example of what might happen is this preganglionic neuron jumps over here, jumps into the sympathetic trunk, and goes up a level, and then makes the connection. The take home is that typically the cell bodies, postganglionic neurons of the sympathetic nervous system, are going to be located in the autonomic, in the sympathetic trunk. Okay? Like that, that's going to be a question on your, your exam, right? It's going to be, mom's going to give it to you right, right now. This is like a freebie if you can just remember it. All right. <laughs> Where are the cell bodies of the postganglionic neurons of the sympathetic nervous system located? And you'll have a choice that says the lateral horn of the spinal cord, the central nervous system, the target organ, or the sympathetic trunk and you'll pick sympathetic trunk and you'll get it right. That's like a hard question though, right? It's like a, it's like a pretty hard question. But you got, but you'll see that one and you'll get it. Or some version of that question. Okay. All right.